All right, this is Mr. Gilliam, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the quadratic formula. Okay, so now this may be something that you've used in the past, maybe not. Okay, it might be brand new. Okay, but you use the quadratic formula for uh, equations that are in standard form. Okay, um, the first thing you have to do is set your equation equal to zero. All right, similar to some other stuff we've done. Okay, so yesterday we completed the square and we solved for ax squared plus bx. Today, using the quadratic formula, we're going to set it equal to zero. So we want everything on one side, nothing on the other. All right, and then this formula up here, this x equals all this stuff, okay, this is going to be how we find our solutions to the equation. Okay, I'm going to literally plug in a, b, and c into this formula and it's going to give me the answer. All right, it's like magic. Okay, then you're going to solve, and then whatever you get there, it, those are going to be your solutions. Okay, and notice we have a plus minus sign in here, just like what we've been doing when we square root both sides. So, as you can see, we're going to get we're going to get uh, two solutions, just like we have been recently. Now, to make this quadratic formula go a little smoother for you, okay, it says. If all the numbers have a common factor, simplify before using the quadratic formula. I'm talking like if you have something like 3x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0, and you notice that they all have a 3 in common, take that 3 out. Okay, factor that out. That way you don't have to worry about these big A values. Okay, you can divide both sides by 3, get rid of that 3. Okay, x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right, and then now your A, B, and C values are much smaller. They're easier to work with. Okay, that, that's just doing yourself a favor. You'll still get the same answer either way, but it's going to be much simpler, much easier to use the quadratic formula if you do it that way. All right, so I have this equation here, okay, and it's just an equation. It doesn't say find the zeros. It doesn't say anything like that. It's just an equation. It just has one variable. We need to solve for X, okay? Solve using the quadratic formula. Now... I'm, I'm assuming that no one really remembers what the quadratic formula is, but you do need to memorize it because it's the most helpful formula in the math world. The quadratic formula is the opposite of b, or negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. All right, and that's what your variable, whatever variable you're solving for, in this case it's x, that's what x is equal to. All right, and let's just label my A, B, and C values. There's A, B, and C right there. So I'm literally just going to plug stuff in to this equation here. So it's just a substitution. All right, I want to make sure that I already factored out everything I can factor out and make my numbers smaller. I know 4, 12, and 9 don't have anything in common, so I'm at the smallest numbers I can get. So I'm going to start plugging stuff in, okay? I know X equals the opposite of, so negative, negative 12, plus or minus the square root of. Now, if you don't plug your numbers in with parentheses, you will not get the correct solution. So make sure you plug in these numbers with parentheses. Negative 12 quantity squared minus 4 times A times C. Okay? And if you didn't plug your negative 12 in right here, with parentheses, you're going to get a negative answer under there. We need it to be positive. This term right here is always positive because you're squaring it. It's always going to be a positive number. If it's not, you made a mistake there. Okay? It's always got to be positive. All over 2 times A, in this case, is 4. Okay? A, B, and C. All I did was plug that stuff, all these numbers, A, B, and C, into this quadratic formula. So now I'm just going to simplify x equals negative negative 12 is just 12 plus or minus on the inside of the square root I have 144 minus I know 4 times 4 is 16 times 9 is 144 okay all over 2 times 4 is 8 so I'm going to keep simplifying I know that x must equal 12 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. I know that the square root of 0 is 0. So I'm just going to say x equals 12 plus or minus 0 over the over 8. So 
So really I just have x is equal to 12 plus 0 over 8, or x equals 12 minus 0 over 8. That's what that plus minus means in there. So x must equal 12 eighths or 12 eighths. Okay, so in this case it would be like a multiplicity 2. If I reduce this, x equals 3 halves, and we're just going to put multiplicity 2. I got the same solution twice. So there's my solution. And, and once again, once you memorize the quadratic formula, all you're doing is substituting. Okay? All you're doing is substituting in. Take a look at another one here. Okay? And just as a reminder, okay, the first thing you always, always, always have to do is set it equal to 0. Okay? So I can either move the negative, the x squared over to the right-hand side, or I can move both terms from the right to the left. Now, just out of habit, I like to keep my x squared value positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. And then I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And now I have it set equal to 0. And I'll, I'll just I'll write the quadratic formula out here again. This is something you will need to memorize. The opposite of b times the square root, sorry, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. So I'm going to plug in a, b, and c here. In this case, okay, I don't care about this equation anymore. That's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my new equation that's set equal to 0. My a value, since there's nothing there, is going to be 1. My b value, negative 6, and my c value, positive 4. And all I'm going to do is just plug them into this equation right here. And in this case, it's x, the variable we're solving for, so I'm going to say x equals that. So I'm going to start substituting x equals the opposite of negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 6 squared, and remember, it has to be in parentheses or you're going to get a negative value under your square root when it's this number, this term, is always going to be positive. Minus 4 times a, 1, times c, 4, all over 2 times 1. Okay? And so what I did there is I just substituted in a, b, and c. So now it's just a matter of simplifying. x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of... 36 minus 16, all over 2. So I have x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. All right, now here's, here's where things get a little tricky. You need to simplify all the way down. Let's just talk about the square root of 20. If I simplify that, I do my little factor tree here, circle my primes. Remember, square roots, there's a little 2 out there that you can't see. For every 2 inside, you can pull 1 out. So I know I can pull a 2 out, and the 5 has to remain on the inside. So I'm going to replace the square root of 20 with 2 root 5. So really, x equals 6 plus or minus 2 root 5 all over 2, because the square root of 20 is the same as 2 root 5. All right, so my two solutions are going to be x equals 6 plus 2 square roots of 5 all over 2, or x equals 6 minus 2 square roots of 5 over 2. All right. And what I notice here is that all the numbers on top are even and the bottom number is even. Okay. If this is the case, you can do two things. Okay. I'm going to do one, one each way. What you can do is you can mono out. X equals 2 times 3 plus the square root of 5. Okay. And if I distributed that back through, I would get 6 plus 2 root 5 all over 2. And I can simplify this way. and get 3 plus square root of 5. Or you can simplify a little quicker, all right, and just take the 2 out of every part. But every single part has to be canceled. You can't just cancel just the 6 or just the 2. It has to be every part in the terms up on top. Or x can equal 3 minus the square root of 5. Okay, and that's just a 1, so we don't need to write that down there. So whatever makes more sense to you, you need to make sure that if there's something you can simplify, you do simplify it. All right, so look for those common numbers they have in common. All right, let's just do one more here. OK, 
Okay, and once again, what you need to do is you need to solve for zero. You want zero on one side, everything else on the other. So I'm going to start by subtracting. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I notice that in this problem, my x squared value is negative right now. And I like this one to be positive. So what I'm going to do is actually add 5x squared to both sides. That means I have 7x minus 4 equals 5x squared plus 2x plus 3. I'm going to subtract 7x. And the reason I'm doing all this stuff is so I can solve, I want it set equal to 0. 5x squared minus 5x plus 3. And I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So 0 equals 5x squared minus 5x plus 7. Okay, and now I have an equation here where I can label my a, b, and c values. a, b, and c. Okay, and I'm going to use my quadratic formula. And I'm going to write off to the side on the left here this time. The opposite of b, or the negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. I'm just going to start substituting in. Once again, our variable is x, so I'm going to say x equals the opposite of b, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 5 squared. Okay, now if that term isn't in parentheses, you're going to have some problems because it's going to be negative under there. You need to keep it in parentheses. Minus 4 times 5 times 7. Okay, I just plugged in a, b, and c all over 2 times a. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify. x equals negative negative 5 is positive 5 plus or minus the square root of 25, looks like minus 140, all over 10. Okay, yeah, 4 times 5 is 20 times 7 is 140. Okay, so now we're going to actually get an imaginary solution because what's going to happen is plus or minus the square root of negative 115 all over 10. Okay, and we know from the other day that whenever you have the square root of a negative number, that really indicates that there's an imaginary number. So this negative becomes imaginary. So what we need to do before we're done is make sure 115 doesn't simplify. I know 5 times 23 equals 115. They're both prime. There's no factors inside that are common, so I know that all I need to do is get rid of that negative number, okay, this negative. I know i equals the square root of negative 1, and the square root of negative 115 is really the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 115. So I'm going to change the square root of negative 1 in here to an i. I'm going to say x equals 5 plus or minus i times the square root of 115. And let's go ahead and leave the i in front for today all over 10. So my two solutions would actually be x equals 5 plus i root 115 over 10 or 5 minus i root 115 over 10. Okay? And all the rules apply. You still, you can never have square roots in the denominator. Okay? You need to simplify all your, your fractions, all your square roots. And finally, I want to make this really clear. The last example we canceled out like this, where 5 and 10 would cancel if these two would cancel or we monitored out. Okay? You cannot cancel out a 10 with a 115 under the square root. Okay? You can only cancel out numbers under square roots with other numbers and square roots. So this is the reduced form. You cannot simplify any farther than that.